session we have dr ganga mehto as our resource person and uh, he has been teaching english language and literature to post graduate and graduate students as an assistant professor in ncert rie bhopal uh, since 2019 he also worked as an assistant professor in yn digwara saran from 2017 to 19 He has taught uh, English to senior secondary students and postgraduate teachers of English of KVS uh, from 2009 to 2017. He has also received uh, professional qualification to teach English from uh, EFLU English and Foreign Language University Hyderabad in July 2009. He has also trained. Uh, uh, he has also been trained in the language laboratory in EFL University Hyderabad. and during his uh, training he taught english as a second language and practiced the same with his students uh, besides he has also done phd in english on regionalism in the major works of r k narayan he qualified net in 2013 and a state level eligibility test from jharkhand in 2007 he has presented more than 20 papers in various seminars and conferences he has also published many research papers in elt in reputed journals in india and abroad currently he is working on the impact of social media in human language so welcome we have an illustrious personality from uh, a very popular the makka of all the english teachers that is english and foreign language university hyderabad uh, a product of that university so welcome dr g mehto over to you dr uh, ganga mehto sir i think you have to unmute yourself uh, please unmute yourself hello uh, sir again uh, we are unable to hear you dr mehto is it audible now yes yes it is audible yes uh give me a minute i need to mute our app to system in you know i had a backup plan so i think laptop didn't work so i am using my ipad i think it should work but i'll be sharing the screen from my laptop audio oh. is uh, given from this i think uh, thank you shalini ma'am you have given a lot of uh, i don't know i didn't want the whole profile to be read though it was a short but i didn't want the whole to be read anyway thank you very much and uh, i hope that around 80 people have 80 participants have joined from various parts of the country the topic that is given to me is uh, intellectual property rights i think uh, the topic should have been uh, either given in the beginning itself because a lot of discussion must have already taken place about intellectual property and all uh, yet i i hope that my presentation will bring something some have will have some quality or something that you might be looking for being an intellectual so uh, with that uh, can i share my screen uh, yes how much time how much time i have got shalini ma'am uh, so you you have got a lot of time Please carry on. Okay, okay. So I'll be carrying around forty minutes, uh, I'm, and then I'll be taking some questions. Yeah, sure. So I presented, uh, I prepared uh, this, uh, you know, slides for around forty minutes of presentation. I think my is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Is my is screen visible? visible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me just uh, do a few quick settings. Yeah. Done. so this intellectual property rights i think for last 7 uh, days you must have been talking about uh, and, and listening about intellectual properties so what exactly is intellectual property uh, how do you define uh, intellectual property so let us see this intellectual property is something that is uh, 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 you know you must have heard this term brain child you know something that is uh, that is your creativity something that is created by you and uh, that property does not uh, you know exist somewhere else earlier so it's completely your property you have thought upon the idea you got new idea new methods or new product and you think that this was not earlier found somewhere else so it's completely new and then because you have thought upon the idea or you have created the property it's your right should be there on the property someone else should not be 
misutilizing that property. That's why there are certain things called rights on intellectual property. So this intellectual property is product of a particular individual. It may be a product of organization as well. So it may be a product of a group of people. So it cannot be just one person's brainchild. It can be a group of people or, or an organization's brainchild. But then it should be limited to either one person or an organization. And at large, sometimes it is up to a country as well if the property is taken by uh, you know taken up by the country so it's just a group of people or so one individual's property that is uh, considered as intellectual property now uh, if we come to india government of india has been doing a lot of works to foster intellectual properties and a new initiative has been taken earlier a lot of things were there but a new thing that is coming up in uh, uh, NEP 2020, new edu uh, you know, National Education Policy 2020, is that they want to set up a research institute. The research institute to, is yet to be named. So I'm just, I have just written Indian Research Institute, but there will be a proper name and they'll establish one research institute. That is going to give a lot of focus on creating new things, establishing new you know, setups and bringing out something innovative, some, something creative uh, you know, from, from the individuals of the country. Already India had a lot of things that brings uh, or the, that fosters, uh, you know, kind of innovation and intellectual property. We have Atal Innovation Mission. Now uh, you can see the logo on the top right. Atal Innovation Mission that uh, that works in the area of innovating new things. It's under Niti Ayo. Innovating new things and fostering innovation. Then we have, uh, in order to uh, boost up creativity, you have Make of in, Make in India. So you all are familiar with that. Then uh, in order to bring out 20th century skills and equip the you know young people for the new skills, there is a Skill India kind of mission. Then Digital India, we all are familiar with. That's uh, bringing out the digital divide from the now now from the cities to the rural area. Earlier it was to divide, uh, bridge the divide between the, the Western countries and Indian, uh, Indian uh, India. Now it is uh, to bridge the divide between rural India and, and urban India. So digital India is there. And then Startup India is also there to promote entrepreneurship and bring out more and more Indians in the process of innovation. So these are some of the, you know, uh, uh, some of the steps or, uh, you know, kind of um, establishments done by government of india to foster intellectual property and bring out new things in india now intellectual property if you think uh, can be of many types it can be inventions or innovations i think you know the difference between invention and innovation invention is mostly product and innovation is uh, related to some promotion of that product and bringing out some new things uh, bring that product more forward. So you have inventions, innovations, then you have literary and artistic works in this category, all that we can think of. This is the category most of us will be working around as, as teachers, as, as research scholars, as students. Our area of focus is mostly li literary and artistic works. Then in companies, you have designs and symbols. We'll be discussing each of them in detail. Then you have names and images. They are also intellectual property. And then computer programs and databases. We have lots of softwares and all in databases. They are also part of intellectual property. So this intellectual property uh, can be divided broadly into these five different categories. Then why intellectual property rights? Why do we need intellectual property rights? It says that the intellectual, the, the property is created by an individual or maybe a group of people. So that individual or a group of people need to have a control on the, that property, at least for some period of time. And it gives a right to the creator to use and benefit from that intellectual property. Sometimes this intellectual property is misused. You might have seen this picture coming on every slide where you have uh, this idea kind of uh, uh, bulbs, uh, you know, kind of a uh, graphic is there and somebody is trying to pick it up. So many a time you have created something and you think that because you have created, you have the right to create that, you have the right to use and benefit from, from that uh, you know, uh, property, but someone else has taken that. Many a time you have, uh, you have heard stolen, the, the paper uh, from there you have plagiarism and all. So many a time it's taken by someone else 
used by someone else so what ha really happens is that someone else un you know uh, uh, illegally without the permission of uh, the creator takes the property and misuses it so this intellectual property rights give the the creator the right to use and benefit from that property so it's a kind of protection of creativity so if creativity is there it should be protected and government will give you right or the laws will give you right to protect that of course uh, these laws are already there have been there and morally we should do that but when moral uh, moral values are not followed uh, then certainly and of course commercial with moral you have commercial values also attached so when moral and commercial values are not followed right will come or law will come to protect those those uh, rights or that property so that's why we need uh, we need these rights to uh, save those uh, safeguard those property from un you know uh, unintended theft or unintended use so uh, you have a site called ipindia.nic.in that we'll be talking on this uh, website in india has got a lot to uh, do with safeguarding your intellectual property now let us talk up for the rights that are there related to intellectual property and uh, the rights that is enacted in india so what are these rights and how they are enacted in india uh, first of all the most important right that we as uh, you know teachers and students will be dealing with is copyright act this copyright act came uh, post independence in 1957 and this uh, copyright act we will be discussing in detail this uh, act has been amended many a time almost uh, frequency of 7 8 years it was amended the last amendment has taken place in 2012 and 13 and that is continuing still now so that's a copyright act brought out in 1957 and amended in uh, 2012 major amendment which was uh, adopted by the government in 2013 then we have patents act which was uh, brought out in 17 uh, sorry 1970 so 1970 patents act came and it was last amended in 1999 and 2005 then 1999 trademark act came and uh, re- along with trademark act uh, act there is another act that also came into existence that is called geographical indication of goods act so this is geographical indica- indication act or gi act they also call in brief so trademark uh, act and uh, gi act came in 1999 they have also been amended Uh, then designs act came in 2000 when lots of computer graphics etc started to come lots of computer designs started to come then designs act came in 2000 and it was last amended in 2014 then farmers rights act came uh, in 2001 which was mostly related with protection of plants varieties when lots of hybridization and uh, creation of new plants started then farmers right act came in 2001 and then biological diversity act came in 2002 this is mostly dealing with ecosystem and saving of bio- biological diversity so these are the acts that are related to intellectual property safeguarding uh, your intellectual property is there in india and uh, you have to uh, go to particular website to to more, know more about these acts of course i'll be discussing some of them in brief something that is related mostly to us how will we you will be safeguarding your intellectual property so it's not very difficult it's very easy you have to create original idea contented product this is very very important the first step that idea should be or the content should be or the product should be original checking that, that this time like you should find out whether the idea that you have is really yours or already already there is there is similar idea or maybe uh, exactly the same idea sometimes as well is there so you need to first make a detailed study of whether the idea is really yours or really genuine or is somebody else has somebody else has already worked in that area and uh, the product or the content or the idea is already available so creating original idea is there and of course for related to this you have a lot of websites that offer you suggestions ip uh, you know act also has some similar idea where you can go and already search whether they have already the product or the idea or the content is registered on the same name and the description will be found uh, when we talk of copyrighted things we also look up the phd thesis and all where we can search whether the similar content has been produced so say for example i have done uh, you know research on arkenarine 
originalism in the major works of Harkin Narayan. So before I take up the study, I must search. Now most of the things have come online. Maybe uh, a few years ago they were kept uh, mostly in the uh, you know libraries. Now they have come online, and you can mostly uh, you know easily find out whether research has been done in that area or not. So I must check whether already this research has been done by someone else or similar research has been done. and my research how is going to be different than that so you need to really find out whether your idea is unique or original or new if you find that it is new then you can register for if you want to do maybe a research you can register at the university and then go for the research if you have created some product and all you can find out the similar website where you can go for the registration so you have to then register or publish sometimes you can uh, when i like if you have already done phd and you want to do some research new research then you need to really publish it and then uh, once you publish it automatically write the com- the right comes to you there also you have to see whether the right is lying with, with the publisher or the right is lying with you so see that the right comes with you so that you can make use of the uh, you know Results that you have created, then protect it. Once you have uh, created and registered, the third step is also, uh, you know, protecting it. Many uh, people will come if anything that you create now goes online in a matter of seconds. But then you need to really keep a watch on whether that idea is really protected or whether somebody is misusing that idea, because somebody else may may uh, take the idea and misuse it and then. Uh, if somebody else have the right on that idea then certainly you will not be able to claim that you have it's your you know kind of um, uh, you know property because that person has taken help and got it on his on his or her name so that way you need to also keep a watch whether that idea is used of, of course like uh, as uh, as you might must have uh, must have uh, listened to other uh, other presentations and then you must have understood how publishing a paper after even after publishing a paper you get a reference list citation list as how many times it has been cited where it has been cited where it has been used so keep a list and uh, uh, look for permissions also if somebody is asking for permission give details if somebody would like to use your idea or use your content you must be accessible enough by them uh, in case of uh, you know they are willing to ask for some permission to use a part of your idea or part of maybe text that they would like to so you must protect it giving particular necessary permission so if you give permission then you can claim that i have already given permission to use this much part so this whole idea is mine only this part is given to him for for using so that way you need to also keep a watch on how you can protect your content uh does that mean that if you have not published your idea or not registered your idea does that mean that others have got right to use it no certainly not so there are a lot of properties which are not which are not registered intellectual property still the rights uh, of that property falls to the creator itself so once you create something new automatically you are getting the legal rights over the, your creation provided you are able to prove that that was your creation and it was not somebody else's so automatically you get the right to uh, you know right over your intellectual property these rights are related to copyright say for example you have published something or you have even created a paper and you have not published somewhere not of course not you have uploaded that paper on internet so you have created some pro- some property and not uploaded out in uh, uploaded on internet you are getting rights but once you upload it freely then you cannot claim the right so you have that that properties uh, right automatically falling on you then some designs right will be discussing them in detail database right common law trademarks trade secrets some secret related to trade and all and some confidential information like the government of india and other people they have some confidential information related to trade army defense etc all these are unregistered some of them are unregistered unless they are authentically registered by the site so before it is registered it is automatically the creator's right over the property and but once you registered them you got now legal rights so the registered intellectual property is recognized earlier it was unrecognized but right is lying with the creator but now if you register these intellectual properties you got recognized intellectual property rights that means you are getting the ownership so you have become now the proven 
the legally proven owner of that property you okay, have got copyright you have got trademarks you have got registered uh, you know design rights you have got patents you have got restricted uh, restricted exploitation that means if these this property is uh, registered that means that you have got restricted exploitation and nobody is going to use that property without your permission so that means you are restricting the exploitation of that property you are not allowing other people to use that that means registering the property is very very required now what are the uh, kind of a uh, uh, you know property that you should be restricting use of let me hide this yeah types of intellectual properties are uh, here as per government of india's rules you have copyrights when you have property property that means you have got the right to copy for a limited time they they give it at, as to how many times you can hold the copyright maybe they say that after 100 years copyright automatic automatically ceases to exist so you have got either the person if the person is living he has got the right to copy and make use of it if the person uh, is deceased or passes away natural uh, heir gets the right to uh, use that property so copyright uh, act allows you to copy and make use of that property then you have patents uh, the right of patents uh, give you uh, you know it excludes other from making or using or selling an invention patent is mostly related to invention and it doesn't allow others to make a copy or make a similar design or uh, or sell that particular inventions so patent is mostly related to invention and and it uh, forbids other people to misuse that property then you have industrial designs these designs are like mostly visual designs and it uh, kind of protects the design of objects uh, that are not purely uh, you know utilitarian so some designs that are not uh, you know that are not purely utilitarian that are not to be used and you have created it you have got uh, rights on those designs to make use of the uh, use of that and nobody else is using that then you have trademarks trademarks are the recogn recognizable sign or design or expression which identifies products or services of a particular source from others so uh, it distinguishes your product from the rest of similar products so your trademark so this trad registered trademark separates or distinguishes your product using a sort of design or symbol from the rest of similar product of the same type then you have geographical indications here you have names or design used uh, on products which corresponds to the specific geographical location or or origin so it indicates that this product belongs to particular area and this product belonging to a particular area has got a specific quality because of the geographical location we'll be also discussing that in detail then you have integrated circuits uh, layout design of integrated circuits this is, uh, has become very popular now most of the mobile phones and uh, technological devices they work on integrated circuits starting with radios and all t radios televisions and most of these electrical circuits so once you design something specific you get right on those designs you know how what kind of circuits are used how they are arranged how they are connected to each other how they are communicating to each other and how they are creating a particular design in order to let let the particular product work so that integrated circuits design is there that also help you uh, that that is also protected and you cannot make use of that then you have trade secrets which are undisclosed for example some formulas some practices some processes some designs some instruments some patterns they are all undisclosed information related to trade you know, they might say that the formula of making making a coca cola that has been a very very secret formula and nobody else can make a similar uh, you know can steal that secret and make similar product so there are all these things are secrets related to trade say for example you have particular secret related to maggi uh the the most uh, famous product among the kids and once it was really uh, uh you know kind of uh, targeted as well so what are the formulas related to preparation of that how they are mixing what kind of ingredients they are mixing so that all formula and it's a trade secret 
this is also product uh, protected type of property and cannot be misused what happened yeah uh, let me just uh there is some problem just give me a second give me a second Is the text visible there? Uh, not now. Then there is some break. Okay. Well, it is visible. Okay. So can I just close this and try to reopen? I think I was here. Was I here? Uh, yes, sir. I think. No, this one you have done, I think. Yeah, I think I, I was to go to the next. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I think it's, it's is it uh, there? Can yes. See? Yes, sir. Office of Controller General of Patents. Okay. Design. Office of Controller of General of Patents, Designs and Trademarks. So, India has got uh, uh, a few offices. Uh, centrally located at Nagpur, which is called Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Intellectual Property and Management, RG and IIPM uh, and PIS. That's uh, centrally located in the center of India at Nagpur. And uh, then you have uh, Office of Controller of General of. So this Controller of, uh, of General is there. Controller of General is there. He controls the patents, designs, trademarks. Uh, so uh, Office of CGPDTA. And this controls all the institutes that come under this uh, uh, related to property, intellectual property. So you have patents office, which is located at uh, four places, Kolkata, Delhi. Kolkata is the head office, Delhi, Chennai, and Mumbai, where you can register your patents. You have designs office and in Kolkata. You have trademarks registry office, again, at five places, Mumbai, uh, head office, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, and Ahmedabad. There you can register your trademarks because lots of, um, most of the cases pending related to intellectual property is with trademarks only, or commercial use. So trademarks has more office compared to other intellectual property. Then you have geographical indications registry, and it's a GI registry, which is in Chennai. And then... Uh, we have copyright registry, which most of us deal with, which is uh, located in Delhi. And then you have some other similar registry related to circuits and all. And that is in Delhi, related to integrated circuits. It's in Delhi. So these are offices. There you can contact. I'll be discussing some of these websites where you can register your intellectual property to. to. So the, this is the you know central map of Controller General of Patents, Designs, and Trademark, which controls most of the intellectual property in India. Now, when it comes to copyright, which all, all of us will be dealing to, and we you must have had lots of sessions on copyrighted materials and all, how to save yourself from copywriting, all, all these things. Uh, in case something is uh, something happens and then your property is misused, your intellectual property, your maybe thesis, your paper is misused and you want to uh, make a kind of claim over there, or something similar is there and you want to register a copyrighted Thing, or you want to have a copyright registered on your product. So first of all, what are the products that come under copyrighted and how you'll be registering that? So let's start with products that come under copyrighted, uh, you know, copyright office. Literary works, that is our, you know, cup of tea, uh, novels, poetry, research papers, theses, uh, dissertations, newspaper articles, dramatic works, all these literary pieces that that uh, where you have this where, where you do something in black and white right do do write something they are literary works they are copyrighted materials so you'll be looking for copyright office in order to register these products of course if you publish it in some journals magazines books that particular publisher gets the right 
from these centers to get these works copyrighted. They get ISSN number, ISBN number, and all these numbers, and they are registered, uh, you know, books or journals under these copyright offices. Then you have artistic works like paintings, drawings, photographs. Very importantly, if you take some good photographs, you have the right to protect it, and they are copyrighted for photographs. I'll be also discussing how you cannot take any photograph from uh, any website and use it, or maybe use it in one of the works that you want to publish. Photographs are copyrighted works, so you cannot make use of it without permission. Then a sculptors, those, those uh, uh, kind of statues and all. Then architectural designs, uh, architecture, most of the engineers make use of this. Maps, fashion designs, they are all artistic works and they are also uh, uh, kind of uh, under copyright office. Then you have cinematographic works like films, the, including documentaries and all that you create, web series, TV programs, advertisements, or any documentary that you create. All these creation, cinematographic creations, they are all uh, under copyright uh, you know, office. Then musical works, songs, lyrics, music, podcasts, radio programs, sound recording of any type, they are all copyrighted material. Then computer, you have softwares, tables and compilations, computer databases, all these, those uh, computer software, all those applications also now, of mobile applications, they are all under copyright. So copyright office looks after these uh, five popular kinds of property, literary works, artistic works, cinematographic works, musical works and computer related works all these things now i think you should, you have a fair idea as to what kind of property are copyrighted and you should not be making use of these copyrighted materials in your papers or in your works without taking prior permission from the publisher or content creator so how this property is to be registered you have this office of copyright uh, uh, when a copyright office is there, uh, you can uh, log in to copyright.gov.in. Then you have a copyright registration, registration form available over there. You can uh, you have to download that form or online fill that form. So two options are available. Uh, and you have to upload your content either in PDF if you have any text, JPEG or PNG if you have any other uh, you know uh, photographed things, audio and video. So any these uh, Type of uh, these types of files are accepted by copyright office. You have to upload these files. Of course, they will take longer time. They will try to verify whether this kind of content is authentic, original, and created by you. And then once it is proved that it is new, then they will give you copyright. A few license fees required, maybe a few thousand bucks rupees. You have to pay to get that copyright. And then once it is copyrighted, you can have that right of copying it as long as you you know as long as the copyright laws allow you mostly you can have it off on your lifetime with a, uh, you know a certain renewal terms if, if there are certain uh, so if you have copyright law what what are the things that you can do with your property what you can do is that you can reproduce the same in other forms like in the forms like print and digital forms you can reproduce the property in print and digital form, say you had a book, you can get it digitally published. No one will claim because that's your property. Of course, you cannot you cannot republish it. If you have published something like that, republish in the sense republish as a different book, as a different paper. So you have created a property and have, have got the right, you can republish it. I've got the right to publish the same, under the same title, uh, in the same license, without any other changing the, that property. So you can reproduce the same in print and digital form. You can go for its public performance. So if you you have got, a, say you have published a novel and um, and then somebody wants to make a movie based on that or may want to play a, a make use on theater, they want to have a production, theatrical, a theatrical performance on the stage. And uh, this is to be staged in the public that person has to contact you can give the, the drama company you can sell even that you can sell your work to the drama company or to the particular uh, group of people for public performance and communication to the public so you have the right to 
let it go in the public uh, maybe you can even give the right of telecasting it broadcasting right rights are lying with you so you can allow that to be broadcasted by someone else maybe uh, someone else can create an audio book out of the book that you have written a novel you have written or a story you have written and you want that to be in the form of audio book someone else can convert or maybe you yourself can get it converted into audio books the right will still be lying with you you can get that property translated into other languages so you have published a book in english and you want that original language in india many regional regions demand it so you have got the right to get it translated into other languages like um, in ncert we have got lots of books published every year even including textbook so ncert got the right to get the uh, textbooks published in various languages when the state demands scert demands that okay we want this book in our language so we have rights to those state government uh, sorry state uh, organization as cert is to get that book translated so the exclusive right of uh, that book is lying with ncert and the states get right from us to get it translated into other languages so this uh, copyright material has got right to get it translated into many languages and the royalty if, if your books are translated into more than one languages and published the royalty will also come to you of course if there is a good translator and the translator charges for you so you have two ways either you can hire a translator and get it translated or the translator works on his own and say takes some portion of the money royalty from you so that way you have to decide how you are giving rights to that translator but the main right of that text will be lying with you of course i was as i was uh, talking you can adapt that into movies if somebody wants to make a movie out of that make a documentary out of your work so you have the right to allow that documentary or movie to be created or not the person cannot make the documentary without taking your permission so copyright uh, act gives you these five kinds of permission permission of uh, reproduction public of a uh, permission of public performance of broadcasting of translating and adapting into other languages uh, uh adapting into other formats so these are the rights that you have if you have got copyright uh, you know act uh, if you have got copyrighted material with you now we'll come to patents so you have this office of controller general of patents designs and trademarks which is uh, the department under promotion of industry and industrial trade government of india so minister of commerce and industry it's falling under minister of commerce and industry patents uh, what is a patent patent is generally an invention or technology which has not been anticipated by publication in any other document or used in the country or elsewhere in the world before the date of filing of patent application with complete specific you know specification it has industrial application so applicability so it's uh, mostly used in industry and it's an invention which was not earlier there and a non existing invention which was neither registered uh, anywhere else nor a similar thing was like heard somewhere else or seen somewhere else so it's a new invention a uh, industrial invention which is going to be beneficial and be used in the industry so it's patented now there is a very uh, specific rule related to patent if two people apply for a patent on the on an identical invention the first one to file the application will be awarded the patent so that means here first filing or first come first serve uh, rule of first come first serve is applicable so that means uh, like uh, these mobile phones and you must have heard that samsung ne sony pe uh, you know ya ya apple pe case kara ki aapne mere uh mere jaisa similar design ya kuch ko chori kiya because they said that like, you know uh they have had that property already patented and now apple or someone some uh, someone else has taken that and is trying to to file it earlier so now in that case you have to prove that it is your creation first uh, or the best thing is that you go file an application for patent first in case for an identical uh, patent or for an identical invention two patents are filed or two applications are filed for, for the same time the one that uh, that has filed the application first will get that patent so it's always beneficial or it, it's always beneficial for the creator to file the patent as early as possible once you once you are sure that this is something new go for filing a patent you think that the idea is new 
go for patent many a time these iits iims and all they create lots of new things uh, for industry and they go for filing a patent so patent is also one of the important intellectual property offices that work a lot in india and getting uh, lots of uh, you know patent filing every every year lots of disputes as well every year patents are valid only for 20 years from the date of filing of an application and you need to renew it for maximum 10 more years after 30 years patent ceases to be and then it becomes a common property so it it has a validity of validity of maximum 20 years then you have designs uh designs are shapes or configurations or patterns so it's a particular thing that you can see through your eyes so it's shape configuration pattern or ornament or composition of lines or colors so you use lines curves textures and all and you create some kind of design it does not include any trademark or a property mark or artistic work so in in a design you don't have any trademark etc it's you know it doesn't have it's not uh, it's not trademark it's something else it's a Uh, you know some shape that is created in order to create something new it may be manual or mechanical it may work in motors or you, it can work manually or maybe works with some chemical uh, products like uh, chemical things it may be separate or it may be combined as well so uh, maybe some designs are separate and then you you go for uh, you know kind of getting a right on that or it may be combined together like circuits are combined it may be two dimensional or three dimensional sometimes you have two dimensional designs sometimes you have three dimensions you know dimensional designs so it can be two dimensional or three dimensional and it can be solely judged by the eye that means you cannot listen to that you cannot do any other you can just look at the design and say that this is different than others so it's solely judged by the eye and designs are renewable for like you know for maximum 5 years or so 10 years of license and 5 years renew so maximum 15 years you can have the right on designs after that it ceases to exist then you have trademarks very popular thing trademarks uh, uh, owner of trademark is an individual can be an individual or maybe an organization or maybe a legal entity if you go to the advocate first and then get the registration so individual or, or organization or legal entity can register for trademark trademarks are mostly printed or labeled on the packets of the product if you have some product it should be labeled on that uh, on the label sometimes they just uh, you know kind of print it and paste it or on the product itself so you don't label it you just punch it on the label so a uh, trademarks have to be located either on the package or on the label or on the product itself now trademarks are of two kinds so one is a uh, trademark common so which you just have claim to trademark in the process of registration that's called trademark then you have registered trademark so if it is not registered then you write tm so this tm is non registered trademark and once it is registered then the symbol that comes is r a circle around it so registered trademark is r non registered trademark in the or in the process of registration is tm and has got validity of 10 years then you have geographical locations the geographical locations are mostly related to source of product from where the product comes so the source of product now you must have heard that uh, government of india has made it compulsory to all commercial websites like flipkart amazon and others to mention the source of the product the country of origin from where the product has uh, you know has originated whether it's made in china made in japan made in korea made in india so it's uh, indicating the product's source it also indicates the quality assurance so you must have heard i am not against chinese products uh, not not in favor of that but then you must have heard yeah, this is chinese product and you cannot rely on that maybe quality issue so quality assurance assurance you with geographical locations you also get quality assurance okay this is assam tea the tea coming from assam must have good quality okay this is a painting from madhubani must have good quality something like this so geographically you get quality assurance the geographical indication gi also indicate that the product has quality it has reputation associated with that say you have mysore silk nice it must be very good silk something like that you have tirupati laddu must be good quality something like this so you have good reputation associated with that as well
uh, you don't know exactly how that that is prepared you go to assam tea go to assam and they have a particular formula of preparing tea which may not be there in darjeeling tea so it's a traditionally prepared some formula etc is there which is very pop popular in that area and only they know how that can be prepared say this uh, mysore silk uh, mysore silk is different than banaras silk because mysore people have the idea how that silk is prepared with with the, the raw materials so it's traditionally prepared only madhuvani people know in a particular area in bihar they know how that painting is created what colors are to be used how designs are drawn so they know so it's a traditionally prepared product and in under this category of geographical indication comes agriculture products for example there is naga mirchi and all another or assam tea and all so agriculture products food stuffs handicrafts and other industrial products come under geographical indications or gi so they are all geographical indications they too are registered under gi act uh, under gi as intellectual property and if you think that your area has got something specific that must be registered in order to make it worldwide popular now where you can get registered of all these things you have i just talked about that you have office of controller general of patents designs and trademarks so you have two major offices you should remember one was the copyright office that i have already mentioned i have given the address of that the second is ipindia.nic.in which is department of Pro promotion of industry and industrial trade under ministry of commerce and, uh, and industry government of india so this uh, this has this institute uh, who is located centrally uh, head office is in nagpur this has got rights to give you patent design trademark and gi and then in, uh, integrated circuits so this has got all these major uh, you know control over industrial products so you have you can all now broadly divide the whole property into two categories one is intellectual property the other is industrial property so this uh, ip india mostly deals with industrial property while copyright uh, you know office deals with intellectual property so you can go to this uh, uh, website ipindia.nic.in there you will get um, uh, some more information about how products are to be registered and all but the the things will be similar once you think that you have new patent new design new trademark new gi or new copyright thing you go to the website follow the instruction of application wait for some time until they verify your product and then uh, pay the amount and then your product will be registered so you have this rajiv gandhi institute of intellectual property management uh, in short that's called rg and i uh, ipm which is uh, in, located in uh, nagpur this along with the registering the product does many other things it trains the examiners of ip so it uh, has some resources human resources who are well trained as to how to register these intellectual properties it also promotes research in the areas of intellectual property and uh, uh, you know kind of educate it, it also create educate people and create awareness among the people excuse related me, to uh, intellectual property yes. uh, excuse me sir dr ganga mehta uh, we are running yes ma'am i request you to kindly continue just can i got five more can i get uh, have i got five more minutes Yeah. Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. Okay. I'll be just dealing with this, and then you have a world organization called WIPO. Uh, this uh, established in 1970, and it's a uh, uh, globally registered uh, organization for IP, and it's uh, located in Switzerland. And uh, you have got WIPO. Int. You can log into WIPO. Int, where uh, intellectual, inter, you know, intellectual property is registered worldwide. So you think that. your property has got world recognition you can also go over there and register your property uh, over there then what if the property is not registered there is one uh, solution for that and which is called creative commons i hope you must have heard of creative commons this gives you license or allow others to copy uh, well while copyright was uh, restricting you this creative commons allow others to copy distribute and make use of these intellectual property freely they but then you have to uh, attribute the property or uh, you know give proper attribution uh, it's a non profit organization this uh, creative commons it it may help you overcome legal obstacles you can create adopt and implement open licensing because they give you open licensing 
you can also share your knowledge and creativity with the world and it also gives uh, permission copyrighted permission of uh, for creative and sharing the works so you have these four kind of licenses in creative commons just two three more slides to go uh, five more minutes i said so you have four kind of licenses on creative commons you have by license which is called ccby this is called ccbi by that means you are giving attribution only uh, that means licensee may copy distribute display and perform the work and make derivative make changes in that work and uh, uh, in that license uh, in author's license then you have ccsa that means you have you can copy it but you have or you can make use of that but you have to share it alike you cannot make any changes to that property so if you have taken any photograph and that photograph has got some watermark or some name written over there you can share it alike without making any change you cannot drop that photograph and use it then you have a ccnc which is non commercial product that means you can make use of that property online but then you cannot use it for commercial purposes for business business purposes you can use it for individual purposes and then ccnd that means it's a non derivative license you can make use of the property but you cannot make any changes to that property you have to use that property as it is so these are the four different kind of licenses and based on these license uh, these four kind uh, you have cc uh, can be of different kind and cc by has got got maximum flexibility that means that means you can attribute you can remix you can commercially use you can freely adapt or make changes uh, to uh, freely used public domain to cc by and sa which is the most uh, uh, you know again open in the sense but then you have cc by and nd which is most restricted and cc by uh nc nd which becomes very very difficult so i think if you want more information about that you have creative commons website you can go there and see next time you search any picture on google next time you search any article or journal on google go to the tools menu and there you go to cc law creative commons licensed work only and what the search filtered search so i i repeat it you go to google you go to tools under the search if you select something and then in tools you say that cc or creative commons licensed only and there you will give get list of pictures or property that is allowed by the uh, created to be used by you and you can make use of that property without fearing or without any fear of copyright laws so that's all uh, this is a table as to which is most open which is most closed this is also available uh, at cc uh, creative commons website if you have any question you can ask thank you very much uh, thank you very much sir and the cc creative commons is uh, really Uh, i'm really thankful to you for sharing this because these days we have to prepare uh, e content and for that you know whenever we lift some image even if we write free images on google mm. Uh, mm. under that it is written you know images are subject to copyright so there is some scariness in that mm. and that yes thank the creative from creative commons uh, we can use it uh, freely without any fear so thank you next time we are going to do that uh there is a, a question also by shelly p how can mm -hmm. we use copyright.gov.in as a research scholar can we upload our research papers uh, no no i think for the small research papers we don't need to go to that copyright.gov.in they're mostly books and journals they go for copywriting things they mostly go there and get your books or journals if you want to publish any paper that journal has got has got to be copyrighted that journal uh, merely uh, that journal has to somehow take a license either from copyright office or uh, similar offices from where these license is provided so if you are publishing a journal and all you don't need to go over there okay thank you sir uh, and there is one more query sir like these days on youtube many youngsters mm -hmm. are uh, making you know comic kind of videos and they use mm -hmm. lot of uh, clippings from different uh, movies and uh, faces of actors so uh, don't they come under copyright they they come under copyright unless you are using it free unless you are taking permission 
so you need to also look for uh, yeah some some documentaries are there which are already uh, if you search it creative commons so next time if you make use of youtube video also uh, apply the tool of creative commons if you apply the tool of creative commons they will exactly tell you what are the videos that can be used so i think i was talking about different kind of licenses under cc and there i was saying that non derivative if the video is non derivative you cannot cut and paste uh, part of video into your video but if that video is free to be available and it, it just uh, attribution is required so then you can make use of that so you have to check whether that uh, video con uh, you know you are including a uh, creative commons video or you you are using copyrighted video so if it is creative commons video it's okay no problem but if you are using license video someone else at later point of time if the, they find out that you have made use of that uh, you can uh, and then once the claim over that property you will lead yourself into a trouble so once you think that this property so it's better that you apply the tool of creative commons before searching for any video uh, uh, pictures or any similar content intellectual property from uh, you know internet thank you very much sir your session was very comprehensive and you added lot many new things right from how to create register how to watch um, uh, what is being used that is created by us then how to approach for patents and design and trade uh, you also told us about the uh, particular addresses as well and what is trademark or what is the difference between r and tm this is also new to me thank you very much for sharing this <laughs> and of course this geographical indications uh, this is also going to help the products like you know here also we have uh, uh, bhadravai rajma red kidney beans from bhadrava and uh, yes, like yes, yes. paintings mm, from basoli paintings so uh, with this you know people will get to know the origin of those uh, uh, wonderful and beautiful things and you also talked about uh, obviously creative commons that is going to help us in making e content as well thank you again dr ganga mehto uh, for your uh, uh, session there is one question by parul bhatija uh, i'll have to take this question uh, okay. parul bhatija because she is requesting uh, she is saying uh, i composed a poem and it got published in an anthology under notion press is my work mm -hmm. is uh, yeah notion press has got uh... Uh, must have taken copyright uh, things from the authentic sources so if you are publishing from a publisher you don't need to worry because the publisher takes care of that copyright things yeah so the I publisher have... gives you copyright or the publisher takes the right so you have to check from the publisher whether the right is falling for you or the right right is given by notion publisher to you or since it is, it is anthology and you have just got one entry so whether the right is lying with her notion publisher so there uh, you know in the second or third page they mention it whether the right is with notion publisher or with individual okay uh, sir i would like to add on to this about arul bhateja's question because motion press is a self publication house so mm -hmm. usually uh, there is a couple of other self publication houses which i am aware of so what mm -hmm. they do they give copyright to the author mm -hmm. so if uh, possibly that may be the case with motion press too so she can confirm it Thank but you. then when it comes to anthologies uh, whether they are giving individual rights to uh, anthology or... that i am not very <laughs> sure i am talking about uh, public <laughs> other books other books yeah yes 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 <laughs> right 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 sir so thank you very much i hope uh, parul bhatija uh, your question is satisfied Uh, thank you for asking that. One more thing is to be added. Like uh, when when this topic was given to me, I also started doing some research, and I came to know about many things. Like ge geographical indication was really something that I would like to go for. So how many other people know about that? They know many things. They create many things, but they don't know the rights that they have, and they don't go for registering it. So maybe it may be our duty as being an intellectual to spread these things to those who come. Uh, in contact with us and we see that something is unique and it it is to be registered we should also help this ip india to spread awareness related to copyright because other countries come up with a small thing and they have copyright or patent over there we create yes. a lot of things and we don't have these products registered <laughs> so we need to, we should be the vehicle for ip india as well being an, an intellectual then this uh, this work will be some useful for those who have attended this session
definitely thank you very much sir and everybody is going to uh, be benefited by the information you have given thank you again